from sponges to jellyfishes to the corals and comb jellies and now we have come to the worms. Now the next two phylums that we study after this they will also have worms in them. You are going to have a great deal of knowledge about worms basically. Now let us see which is the first worm phylum that we are going to study. We are going to break this word phylum platyhelminths. Platyhelminths is to be broken down into two words and we have platy and helminths. Helminths refers to worms, it, is, uh, it means worms and platy means flat. So this phylum is all about flat worms. As you can see over here, this uh, creepy looking organism is a liver fluke that is uh, a flat worm, dorsoventrally flattened means you would feel like it is a paper sheet supposedly. You have a paper sheet and you just cut it into the shape of an organism, whichever shape you want to design, that would be a dorsoventrally flattened organism and we do have such animals present in our uh, world and they are uh, members of phylum platyhelminths, they are flatworms. Now they are mostly parasitic, they are mostly parasitic on other animals. In case of humans also we have many helminths which are platyhelminths which are parasitic like you must have heard about schizostoma that is a very um, you know you can say very prominent and uh, diversely found uh, organism that comes and infects the human body responsible for dysentery and as much as 25,000 deaths are caused by this particular uh, worm. So you can make it out that uh, these worms are uh, of great economic importance as you can say and they are mostly parasitic. Those which are uh, free living, they are mostly marine. So we have mostly marine and mostly aquatic rather, not marine, aquatic free living uh, platyhelminths are present and uh, rest of them are mostly parasitic. Then coming to their characteristics, first thing is that over here we are going to find a clear cut mesoderm that has come. So the organism is triploblastic, till the tenophorans we saw that triploblastic condition was there but that mesoderm was not actually the mesoderm that we talk about. Here we have the clear cut three layers, three germ layers that is why the organism is triploblastic. Then it is bilaterally symmetrical. Now from here onwards we are going to see the organisms which are bilaterally symmetrical. Try to recall the first phylum was radi uh, asymmetrical sorry, the second two, second and third they were radially symmetrical and from now onwards we are going to find bilaterally symmetrical organisms and they are aceromate. When we talk about triploblastic condition we see that there are three layers so we expect that the organism is going to have coelom but over here there is no coelom that is present rather there are parenchymal cells which are present which are secreted by the mesoderm so what you have to remember is that there are parenchyma cells secreted by the mesodermal cells that fill the cavity okay body cavity that body cavity will not be coelom though whatever cavity is present inside the body that would be filled by the parenchyma cell secreted by the mesoderm moving further the body is externally covered by cilia or cuticle okay so these organisms they have cuticularized body you can see over here this uh, particular body would have cuticle layer outside it and uh, there is organ system grade of organization that we are going to find there would be that would not be that advanced as we are going to see in the next phylums but at least there would be organs which would be coming into the scenario instead of those simple arrangements where the organs were not present we, ju we were just naming the parts of a particular region they were not properly organs if we if we are saying that it is hypostome that was not mouth as I told you if we were saying stomatum that was also not mouth but over here we are going to find organs like hookers and uh, suckers which would be present in the head itself okay now uh, organ system grade of organization when we are talking about this we have to see that they have an elementary canal which comes and the I'm going to clear this up in the organ system grade of organization we have incomplete elementary canal now what does that mean an incomplete elementary canal is the canal which has opening known as mouth but there is no 
anal opening. So there is incomplete elementary canal with single opening. And mind it that those organisms which will have parasitic forms, that means which stay in the intestines and rest of the other uh, rest of the parts of their hosts, they do not have a digestive system because all they depend upon uh, for uh, nutrition is their host and. Uh, for that purpose, they have developed the mechanism of absorption from the host itself. Why would they need a digestive system if they are going to get the ready-made food that needs not to be digested? So they do not have digestive system. They instead have developed the simple mechanism of absorption from their body surfaces. And as I told you, most of them are parasitic. So those which are free living, they would have a developed elementary canal which would be incomplete in a way. Now moving further, they have a nervous system as well. The nervous system is having having a superior brain ganglion that is the clustering of few nerves or neurons I would say not nerves brain ganglion it is present anteriorly in the head area and from there the ventral nerve cord originates as I told you in the beginning about non chordate that there is a ventral nerve cord and there are two when they run parallel to each other just like a railway track same thing would be observed over here and the nervous system is not that advanced it is very typical very simple. Talking about the organs, they have hookers and suckers in their head. As you see in the case of uh, tapeworm, as you say in the case of this particular uh, liver fluke, they have hookers and suckers in their head area which are important for joining them to the intestinal wall. There is a class of platyhelminths. There are three classes of platyhelminths we are going to talk about. The third class is specialized in being intestinal parasites and what they do is they go and join to the intestine of your uh, to the wall of your intestine and over there the hookers and suckers they attach they take all the nutrition from your intestine and, and keep on growing and then they give birth to new organisms and later on in stages of life when they have developed so well inside your body your body is going to revert back and give you some sort of signal by causing acute pains and you'll have to get them removed from the body by an uh, operation uh, such as the you know notoriety of these organisms hookers and suckers in the head is it clear I guess now uh, moving further talking about the various functions as we have the organ system grade that is coming to the scenario so there would be sp specialized function of certain organs there there would be division of labor to be very specific so the division of labor uh, that we are going to talk about is next is excretion and for excretion this part is to be remembered this is the characteristic feature of these these uh, all are these characteristic features but this is an important feature that the platyhelminths they have flame cells for excretion and osmoregulation mechanisms. Coming to their reproduction they have both sexual and asexual reproduction that is present in them. They have high regeneration capacity also you must be uh, surprised to know that there is an uh, there is a platyhelminths that is uh, known as planaria if you cut planaria into three parts you will get three planaria. So uh, basically they have high regeneration capacity and uh, that regeneration capacity comes under asexual reproduction. So if, if the planaria is to reproduce asexually it would cut its body into whatever parts it want whatever number it wants into the same number of parts and those would grow into the new organisms. In terms of sexual reproduction the organism is hermaphrodite that is you are going to find male and female sex organs in the same organism but one thing is very uh, strange about these not strange exactly but uh, one thing they have uh, moved towards development uh, towards advancement that thing is that they have cross fertilization even after being hermaphrodite that both the sex organs being present in the same organism they facilitate cross fertilization such as the arrangement of those sex organs that the uh, male gamete from another organism would come and fertilize the female gamete. So that, that is what cross fertilization is. They have indirect development. Now one thing about these organisms is that they are parasitic they have to survive in a host. Moreover, uh, if they have to survive in a host, they are uh, capable of killing that host as well. So they are not, uh, you know, that much enabled that they can 
kill the organism this, this is not predation basically this is parasitism and in order to survive in a better way because they kill the organism that is host organism at one or other stage they have that much ability they have preferred to develop number of hosts so they have a primary host they have a secondary host so the more is the number of hosts more would be the success rate of the parasite to survive so basically they have many number of hosts and many number of larval stages as well so when we talk about the classes uh, we will not talk about larval stages of classes in particular so it's better we know what type of larva are present in the case of uh, platyhelminths we have uh, larvas known as metacercaria muller's larva Circadia larva. There are many types of larva that are present. All you have to remember is any two names you can read. Yeah, that many larval stages are present, and uh, depending on the class of platyhelminths, we have different larva. In case you want to um, have knowledge about that, you can have it uh, from your own perspective. But I guess this much is enough for understanding that they have many larval stages and uh, when you have many larval stages it is not necessary to learn all the names uh, muller's larva is the most uh, common that comes from that comes to be important from learning point of view now what you see over here is a liver fluke okay liver fluke is the best example as was given in the previous image this is the diagrammatic depiction of liver fluke you see this is the outer body this this would be dorsal ventrally flattened this is the outer body it would be chitinous now what you see over here is that the this is oral sucker okay and this happens to be the elementary canal somewhat and it is incomplete that is it is going blind in the end okay this part is the ventral sucker this happens to be the uterus this is ovary this is the body arrangement okay and you see oral sucker ventral sucker there is pharynx that is present there are various glands and there is excretory bladder which is part of flame cells this is the simplest arrangement as you can see what would be located where you need not to understand what is the role of each thing how they are going to be located only for understanding purpose that such would be the simplest organization that you would see in a flatworm and that in case the this organism has a mechanism to survive in the host in its uh, digestive system it would have got rid of these things as well so we have a ventral nerve cord that would be going and we have an elementary canal that would be incomplete there are suckers which are present and there is no anal opening this is what you have to understand from this particular diagram moving further what are the three classes of flatworms the free living flatworms as i gave you the example of planaria that is turbularia class then we have trematoda class in which we have flukes liver fluke blood fluke schizostoma and they are parasitic flatworms known as flukes most of them less than 1 cm as is the case of this okay this is blood fluke that uh, no this is liver fluke only that they have shown over here and the last one is cestoda you have heard about tapeworm as long as 5 meters of a worm could be present in your intestine if you consume uncooked pork so that is what is uh, tapeworm it belongs to class cestoda and when we talk about class cestoda you have to uh, remember that uh, this particular part of the flatworm as you can see these are the segments these are not particularly segments because this particular phylum is unsegmented there is no segmentation as we call metameric segmentation why i am mentioning it over here is that when you see this diagram of class cestoda that is a tapeworm you might be uh, observing this and uh, trying to relate it with segmentation this is not segmentation these are pro proglottids they are small uh, fold segments as you can say the external layer is giving a segmented look and uh, this head is known as colex so these two terms you have to remember as you can see the head is having the suckers i would mention that head is known as colex okay and uh, there are segments this is the tapeworm as you can see 
and uh, let us see a few examples of this particular phylum that you have to remember that you must be knowing what they are for a very better understanding and uh, not understanding for learning purpose. You can uh, google their images so that the images stay in your mind and you can remember their names. First one is Tania, this is the tapeworm that I am discussing over here that comes due to consumption of uncooked pork because pig is the host for this particular parasite. Then we have fasciola that is the liver fluke. Then we have echinococcus. Then we have schizostoma that is blood worm as I told you that would be present in rice fields and then we have planaria. These examples are to be remembered by heart and these are the typical examples that we have for the platyhelminths and these are all the characteristics of platyhelminths that you have to remember and keep in mind for understanding that why platyhelminths have been kept in a different phylum from all the other animals that we are studying one by one.